Howdy, y'all. We've been working on the 2006 Audi B7. We've got videos on the timing belt, water pump, cam follower. If you're interested, check them out. But today, we're working on the brakes. I've already got this car up on the rack, so we're not going to do anything else. If, if you're not at this step, you can go ahead and put jacks under it, block it safely, uh, put it on jack stands safely. And just a tip, a lot of people don't know, it is marked under the rocker panel right there. You could probably see it, but there's an arrow on the lift points on all four corners of these cars. And if you're still unsure, it's always wise to double check with your owner's manual. I've got genuine replacement Audi parts, Audi Volkswagen brake pads, uh, brake rotors, they came with new bolts for the calipers, new clamps, uh, near rear brake pads, and new rear rotors. And there's a misconception on European cars. On most of them, the pads are hard and the rotors are soft. So your rotors are going to wear out sometimes faster than the pads will. So that's why I don't recommend doing what they call a pad slap. Leaving the rotors and just putting new pads on it. If you're having issues, that's definitely not going to solve your problem. This is my son's car, and I've never done the brakes on it before. He's always done all his own maintenance, but I want to do this for him, and I'm going to figure out how, so we're going to do it together. When I inspected it and determined that it needed brakes, you could really see this groove right here in the rotor on each side. Well, the pad on the outside's got a few miles left in it. The one on the inside is almost all the way through. If you're inspecting your brakes and the outside pad looks okay, don't be fooled. Make sure you always check them both. First thing we're going to do is disconnect our connectors here. And this one looks like it has a zip tie on it because the connector's broken. And that's not uncommon. Uh, but typically with these, you want to push the fitting in, push down back here, and then you can pull out. Before I start, I usually put a little penetrating oil on these hard to loosen parts, like there. Same for the back rotors. I do that, and these bolts to remove the calipers. And while those are soaking, the next step is to pull these caps right here. And there's going to be one right here on the top. And that's going to give us access to the bolts to remove the caliper. Using a 7 millimeter hex, you can remove those bolts. You can expect them to be very sticky. These ones have been on here for quite some time. You can get the top one loose right here. Oh, we got to pry out this retaining clip. So, you can use a big screwdriver. I happen to have this bar handy, so I'm going ahead and using it. And get one side out. This bar may be a little too big for what I'm doing here. I'm used to working on caterpillars. There we go. We want to get that clip out past the caliper. There we go. That's our clip. We're going to save that for later because we're going to need it again. We want to make sure that the wire connecting to the brake pad up here on this side is up out of this bracket. Basically, press this tab in. I don't know if you can see that move. You can see right there I've kind of got that tab released so now that will spin around and we should be able to slide that up and out of this bracket. I've removed this one from the brake pad so you can see what I'm talking about. There's the tab right there that locks into the bracket. You're going to need to push that in and then twist this and it will slide up out of the bracket. I'm just going to pry here kind of against that brake pad to relieve that caliper so we can get this loose. There we go. Using a wire or zip tie, I wire up the caliper up here onto the suspension. So that we don't damage the brake lines. Next step, and arguably one of the hardest, is we need to remove this bracket that holds the caliper so we can get the rotor off of here. To do so, there's a bolt here 
in there. They're 21 millimeter. You're going to need a half inch drive. Probably even going to need a breaker bar. There we go. You got to put your whole weight behind it. So if you got this thing up on blocks, be super careful. All right. This is another area where rust can really be a problem. You're going to need a T30 Torx to get this Torx screw out of the rotor. Uh, I find it very useful if you have one to use an impact. If not, you can tap on it with a hammer. We got lucky in this case. Let's see if our rotor's free. Yeah, that's another one I was afraid of. I'm going to give it a couple wraps with this brass hammer. See if I can break it loose. See if I can break it free with my pneumatic hammer. I think it's starting to break loose. I've hit it with the air chisel a little bit and you can really see how it's starting to break loose right there between the rotor and the hub. After working on the D4, this is nothing. That's not at all uncommon on these European cars. They rust, the rotors rust to this hub here. What I'll do before I go back on is kind of sandpaper this off, wire wheel it, something, clean it up. I'll put a light coating of Never Seize right here. And we don't want to get too much. We don't want it to get into our brake system, but just enough to keep it from rusting. For those rusted on rotors, you can always try heat, but I usually refrain from that. It's kind of a last choice because of all the sensitive things inside of here. I'm gonna put a little of this anti-seize lubricant on here, a little. You don't wanna overdo this. You don't want it getting into your brake components. Now we can install our rotors. It'll line up the hole where the Retaining Torx screw is right there. Some of you might be saying that this surface needs to be cleaned. This silver stuff needs to be off here. I've installed a lot of these Volkswagen rotors just like this. And I've been told that that stuff will just kind of burn off the first time you go to try and break this in. It's not going to hurt anything. It's just an anti-corrosive. I've already removed the labels, but I'll clean everything once with brake cleaner just to be on the safe side. Install our caliper carrier over here, and these are going to torque down to about 190 newton meters, which I think is about 140 foot pounds. And I'm going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on these before I put them in there. You're supposed to replace these bolts, it's highly recommended. In fact, it is recommended by the manufacturer should slide around your rotor just like that and behind these holes I'll just snug up these two bolts and then I'll torque them now just looking at this I don't think I'm gonna have enough room because this rotor is very thick down here I don't think I'm going to have enough room up there between the pads. So I'm going to have to pre compress this piston back in the caliper. The most common method by far is to insert one of the old brake pads back into the piston for the caliper. And I've just cut the wires off of it so that they're not going to be in our way. And you can insert a C-clamp around the back of the caliper. Now take care, there's a brake line that goes in the back of the caliper. Take care not to pinch that. And you'll want to screw in your C-clamp and compress that piston back in. And before doing so, make sure that there's enough room in your brake fluid reservoir up in the engine compartment. And that brake fluid reservoir is right there. 
It's also a good idea to unscrew the cap and leave it on there loosely. Clamp is in a safe spot on the back. I'm going to just compress the piston back in by screwing in the clamp. Now they make tools for this, but they don't all fit these uh, type of calipers. Most of them have to have a hole right here where you can insert it. And we're going to need quite a bit of room. These were pretty far out of uh, adjustment, so. And if you do run out of room in your brake fluid reservoir, you'll have to suck some out. I have a suction device or a syringe, something like that. Okay, I think we've bottomed out. I'm going to call that good. Put our wire back here through where the brake line is. At least that's how it was routed. I don't know if that's the correct way, but that's how I'm going to route it. And clip that into there. I'm going to put our caliper right here. So you can see in this clamp right here, there's a hole right down there. Right down there below this clamp were this seat. And what you're going to want to do is seat this in that groove right there. See the groove in that fitting, like so. And then it's gonna just twist around and lock into that small hole right there. And now it's permanently attached. You can actually go ahead and attach it. Now, this one's broke, the fitting from the car, so I'm gonna zip tie this when we get it back up there. But I can start it up here and get it ready. We can install our outside brake pad and it's going to fit in that hole on the opposite side and when you're looking at inspecting brakes it's always going to wear more on the pad on the piston side go past there it goes once they're in they're in the pads are installed in the caliper it should look like this these are the pins that go through the caliper, and uh, the caliper kind of rides back and forth on them. I'm going to take them over in the parts washer, polish them up a little bit, and I'm going to put some new caliper grease on them. Take it off of here where it's tied. I've already cleaned the caliper mounting bolts, pins, and I'm going to grease those with a little bit of brake parts lubricant. A little bit goes a long way here, and you do want to make sure they're nice and clean, and it'll it'll get where it needs to go when I push this in. So just a thin coating on these pins, and we can get those started in here from the back. And those pins are going to go in right here, up top, and right here down below. And we're going to snug those up with a 7 millimeter hex wrench, same when we took them off. And they're going to torque to about 75 newton meters, which is roughly 55 foot-pounds, I think. Next, you'll want to install the little caps that we took off earlier. And one goes on top of the bottom one, and one on top of the top one. And you can clean the inside of that cavity if you need to. In my case, this one's not in terrible shape. Install our clip that holds the pads in there, and don't get intimidated by this because it's not going to go in as hard as it came out of there. You want to start this arm in here, down below. Once you have it like this, you're going to want to hang on to it with your left hand, pry up here on the top, and at the same time, you're going to want to kind of push everything in like so. You can see right here that this clip is not dog-eared into the one on the pad. So we're going to have to slightly tap it down a little bit. And there you go. You want to make sure that it's seated up here at the top. Right there. And down here at the bottom, like so. And so you can see it again and kind of close up. Yep, and in case anybody's wondering, yes, I did cable tie this connector that was broken on the passenger side. So that's it for the front brakes. 
And this is where most of the tutorials end, but we're gonna move on and do the rear brakes. The rear brakes can be intimidating, and yes, you do need a special tool to release them, but I've actually made one myself in the past. I loaned it to somebody years ago, and I don't know where it is, but I have the proper tool to do this, so I'm gonna walk you through it. You can see, as usual, uh, these probably need to be done, or they're getting to. They got a few miles left in them, but I'm gonna go ahead and do them. As usual, the outside is thicker still than the inside. So make sure when you inspect, you inspect for the inside pad. Bolts we're gonna need to remove are right here and up here. You're gonna need two wrenches, one on this end of the bolt and one on this nut to hold it. You wanna make sure that your parking brake is not engaged before starting this process. To remove the caliper, you're gonna need a 15 millimeter wrench and a 13. 13 goes on the outside and the 15 on the inside. Your brake kit should come with new bolts for the calipers. These bolts can be very frozen due to rust. I need to remove this parking brake spring here so I can get to the bolt back here in the bottom and put in the new bolts that came with the kit. There's a little clip right here on this bracket that holds the parking brake spring. And you should be able to just pry that off with a screwdriver enough. You can get that out of there. You can see it right there. Maybe that's a little bit better view. Anyway, that clip should come off. And it's going to look like that. You'll notice a spring right here. And what we're going to need to do is compress this. And you can almost do it by hand, but a pair of pliers is much better and much safer. And with it compressed, you want to get that, that ball out of there. There we go. That should slide up and out of there. And then your brake line should just feed right out from under there. And that's going to give you access to this bolt on the bottom. Yeah, they're not terrible. This outside one is better, eh, but this inside one's getting down there. Good idea we're doing it. You can also remove these clips here that go on the caliper brackets. The kit should come with new ones. So we're going to have to raise up the car. It's not completely necessary, but we're going to need to get inside the suspension to remove the bracket for the caliper. And before we go any further, I should add that it is not entirely necessary to pull the caliper bracket off to get those rotors out and back in. With a little bit of work, it can be done. It's not easy. But in my case, I found that these are so rusted on, I've never been able to get one off of here with the caliper bracket installed. Plus, I want to get to these bolts, take it apart, and get them cleaned up. And yes, these are very difficult bolts to get to. There's one underneath here, one up above right there. And these are often rusted. I'm going to spray some penetrating oil on these to let them soak. Okay, there's that one. And again, these are recommended to replace when you do this job. Because of the constraints due to space, I'm going to be using this 8mm Allen wrench with a cheater. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the end of this 8mm hex. It'll give me a little bit more room under there. And this is an old one we had in the toolbox. I just ground the end of it off about a half of an inch of it. But it's going to be slow going. Little bit at a time. And with the caliper bracket removed, we can remove the rotor retaining screw here. Right there. Looks like these are going to be just as rusty as the front, so I'm going to use the same procedure to get these off. 
Got that off of there. I'm going to clean this up and put a little anti-seize on there, just like we did on the fronts. You want to make note that the bolt for the bottom of the caliper bracket is longer than the bolt that goes on top. Now we'll install our new rotor and pay close attention to where the retaining bolt is. I put a little anti-seize on that as well because once the wheel's on here, it holds that rotor in. If you're like me and you do decide to use the anti-seize on there, make sure that you don't get it in any of the brake pads, brake rotor, any of those parts. You want to use caution here because these rubber boots are a little fragile and what we're going to do, we're going to pull that pin out. I'm going to take this rubber boot off of here, clean it, and re-lube it and assemble it. I'm also going to clean inside there over in the part washer. The remainder of the rubber boot is just kind of a press fit on that lip right there. So when they go back on, you want to make sure you get them fully seated and engaged in there. And be careful not to damage this rubber boot during disassembly and during reassembly. I've cleaned off my caliper bracket. Now I'm going to reinstall my pins. Again, I'm going to use the brake parts lubricant. This is a ceramic lubricant, so it'll take the high temperature heat from disc brakes. And I used a bottle brush to brush inside there and remove the grease, and then cleaned it with solvent and blew it out with compressed air. And we'll put some of this on here. You can pay close attention to the wear marks on it. Definitely going to want to get some there. And we're going to take our boot. It will slide on there. Should snap in up top there. And reinstall into our bracket right there. And the boot on the other side should do the same. Now you can buy new ones of these boots. They are available and pins. Uh, in this case, these are in decent shape. And I'm going to go ahead and reuse them. And the same thing for the other side. Okay, and now we can reinstall. So, somehow I just lost audio during this whole thing, but fortunately, I haven't done the other side yet. I'm going to kind of go over everything that I just did that I lost audio on, and I might even put the picture-in-picture -picture on the side so you can see it as I'm talking about it. Um, but we reinstalled this caliper bracket, and it has two bolts from the back. Uh, the long one goes on the bottom. The short one goes on the top. I put a Loctite on the bolts to put them back in. And you're supposed to torque them, I think it was to 110 Newton meters plus 90 degrees, which we did. I used a cheater pipe to do so. Uh, we then installed these clips that go on the caliper bracket right here. And they basically fit on this groove right here, just like the old ones came off. They should snap in place, top and bottom. And there we go. Then we're going to install our brake pads, which I put a little bit of the ceramic brake lube just on the tips there. We don't want it to get anywhere on the surface of the pad. And those should slide in here like so. And the one on the other side, same way. And these pads, same part number, uh, same exact pads, all four of them. So it doesn't really matter, top, bottom, inside and out. I think they're all made to work universally. And this is the part I'm sure you came for. We're going to use a special tool to push this piston in on this caliper. And this is what that tool looks like. It comes in a kit. Ended up buying one. Uh, we have enough VW Audis in my family to justify it. They're not that expensive on Amazon. A lot of the local auto parts stores, I think they have them for rent, so you can sometimes pick these up and do this job yourself. I've already picked out the correct adapter. I think this is a number six, probably not a nine because it's next to seven. And they magnetically fit in here, and there's different adapters in this set for different brakes um, all over the spectrum. And you want to install this what looks like a brake pad. It's going to install and fit over the handle onto this. And there's a right-handed, which this is, and a left-handed. So you want to make sure you get the correct one. 
I'll be using the right-handed one today. Then this ad adapter, it's kind of neat, this magnetically fits on there. And let me show you how this adapter fits on the piston in the caliper. So those two notches correspond with the notches in this piston right here, those two uh, pins. And you'll want to have this compressed in and then start your tool. Make sure that those are dog-eared in there. You can see. And then I unscrew this until it takes out all the slack. And the way that this works is it's going to press in to push the piston in and it's going to twist at the same time to release it. So you'll want to go up to your master cylinder and double check that you have enough space in there that when you press that piston in, you're not going to overflow brake fluid all over everything. Take this opportunity to check this brake fluid and see if there's any water in it, contaminates, that I need to maybe bleed the brakes. And they look pretty good, maybe 1-2%. So we're in the okay range here. And you can get these testers on Amazon. Not going to turn super easy. The other side did. This side not so much. And I always go virtually all the way. And then I let it retch it back and adjust itself. Um, I've, I've done this enough that I know better than to do what I think it's going to need. And have to take everything apart and redo it again. Now it's going a little bit easier. If you need room in your brake fluid reservoir up top, I, I suck it out with a, a syringe or something, a turkey baster or something. And your kit should have come with new bolts for this, uh, as mine did. So we're going to want to reinstall this. So carefully make sure your piston, make sure your brake pad stays next to the rotor and nothing catches. Sometimes you need to kind of press that in so that caliper will slide it up there into place. Start it by hand. And I got too much grease on there. Good grease job. It's spinning it. Right there. You might recall this is a 13 millimeter, and our 15 millimeter goes on the inside here to hold it, and a 13 millimeter on the outside to tighten it. Put our parking brake cable back in through here. Careful not to damage the rubber boot. Need to compress our spring right there. Around the back side, don't get your glove caught in it. Like so. And lastly, we've got a clip. There's a little groove right there. You wanna make sure that the clip goes into that groove. There we go. Both sides are done. So that's a complete Audi A4 B7 brake job. You're gonna wanna follow the manufacturer's recommendations for breaking in new brakes, rotors, and pads. This is how I do things, not necessarily how you should do things. I'm gonna end it for this video. I'm gonna do another one because I wanna warm this up. We're gonna service it. We just did a lot of work to the engine and I wanna get this thing in tip top shape. But I do want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Push the connector in, push down on the back of the fitting, and they should pull apart. This thing makes me look like a fool on camera every time. I have no trouble when the camera's off. I recall doing other Volkswagen vehicles and never mind because I don't know where I was going with this. Blah, 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 blah.